powering stations around the world. Hi, this is James from Radio.co, the easiest way to start your online radio station. This video we're going to look at microphones. Which is the best microphone for radio broadcasting is a question we get asked time and time and time again. And what we wanted to do is cover off some of the big hitters in the radio industry and look at some of the most industry standard mics out there. You'll see microphones used by your favourite DJs, people like Ryan Seacrest, Chris Moyles, Howard Stern, or even recording artists like Ed Sheeran. But you might not know what mics they actually are. So let's cover off some of the best microphones we've got as radio broadcasters. And we'll start off with the creme de la creme of microphones. This is widely considered the best mic, and this is a Neumann U87. Uh, it's been an industry heavyweight used in recording studios since it was released in 1967, so it's going strong 50 years later. And every single recording artist has probably used this microphone, uh, whether it be classics like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, through to modern day artists like Justin Bieber. This is really an industry standard and it attracts a price tag of uh, $3,000 plus, dollars, um, close to £2,000. And um, it's also used widely in the radio industry as well, especially at the bigger stations who obviously have the budget for this. Uh, radio 1, Radio 2 in the UK, NPR in the US, uh, to name but a few. And it's made in Germany by Neumann, who are you know an excellent mic company. They are considered widely to be the best, in particular, particularly this mic. Um, Howard Stern, however, uses one down from the top. Uh, you might have seen the picture then. He had a TLM 103 in front of him. This is still a really popular mic in radio broadcasting and actually uses the same capsule as the more expensive U87. So it's like his little brother. Uh, a little bit more accessible than the price tag, around £600 or $1,000. So if you're a serious hobbyist or you're setting up a semi-professional radio station, this is something you might want to consider. Um, however, it's still pretty pricey, so we're going to talk about some cheaper alternatives in a minute. Um, we do see, and I've seen this in lots of commercial stations I've been in the UK, um, both local and national stations using this microphone. So it's pretty much very, very good, and this is considered widely another industry standard as well, particularly for radio broadcasting. The Audio Technia, another big hitter. This has been used for years and it's kind of old school now in a, a, lot, a lot of ways. But um, I see this in a lot of uh, local radio stations in the UK. It's the AT4033 ASM. It's a bit of a mouthful, I know. Made in Japan, again, excellent quality mic, um, which is used in a lot of professional applications and broadcasting. These ones become a little bit more affordable. We're talking $700, £300 as is the Shure SM7B. Um, don't see this one used in the UK very much, interestingly. We see this in a lot of radio stations around Europe, um, stations we've worked with in Paris, in Amsterdam, in Germany. We see this, station, uh, this mic used in uh, lots and lots of radio stations in Europe and a couple in the USA as well. Um, rather than being a condenser mic, like the ones we've just looked at, this is actually a dynamic mic, okay? So you can... Um, basically use this as a way to kind of filter out background noise. Dynamic mics work better with very close-up signals. So if you're sat right in front of it, uh, it will definitely record you and it will pick your voice up good and crisp and clean. Um, however, if you've got some noise in the background, perhaps you're, you know, what it's like. If you've got a home studio and the kids are playing in the back garden or next door neighbours are making noise, this might be a good option for you. Apparently it was actually used to record the Thriller album as well. Um, so, But this is a pretty much a broadcast mic. We see this really in radio studios, not in recording studios as much. This one also, this has got to be the industry standard mic in the USA. Every single radio station pretty much in the USA we go to has got an Electro Voice RE20. It's been used for decades in the US. You'll recognise this from talk shows like Ryan Seacrest, that kind of thing. And again, it's pretty affordable. Uh, retails around $700, £300 when you compare it to some of the Neumann mics, which are pushing over 1000 However, it's still a serious purchase to make. I think broadcasters like this mic because it kind of gives them that radio sound. It picks up on the bass and also it picks up on the higher end notes. So you kind of have the sparkle to your voice. And this is really classic sound associated with talk radio in the USA. So... Probably not going to be used much in the UK. In fact, I don't think I've seen this really at all in any stations in England. But every single station in the US love this mic. 
Something that's been introduced, I guess, to kind of uh, compete with this kind of thing is the Rode Podcaster. And we see this used a lot at home now. People who are setting up their own podcast shows, their own internet radio shows, and it's got a really affordable price tag. It's around $200, £140, but it will give you excellent results. Just like the previous uh, couple of mics, this is also dynamic, so it will help you with the background noise issue. But it's meant to be broadcast quality, and it's, you know, pretty cool-looking device. The ex excellent thing about this one is it plugs into a computer directly via USB, so you don't have to go and route it through a desk or route it through an audio interface. Finally, one of the rec uh, recommended mics that we... Uh, we use ourselves a lot. We also recommend it to community radio stations, school radio stations, people who are on a budget at home and want to uh, have an entry-level mic, but will still give them that radio voice, that will still give them that great quality sound, is the Behringer B1. And why we like this one is it's got a nice wide diaphragm, so it's got a really good frequency response, and it will give you that sort of sparkle that you're looking for um, and that professional results. Now, this was actually the first mic that I ever purchased. Um, about 12 years ago now and it's still going strong it still works and it still gives me that nice clean sound and we use this a lot still for recording uh, tutorials we re use this for recording interviews all sorts of stuff like that so it's worth considering you know you don't have to go out and spend 500 to a thousand dollars on a really high-end mic when you can get some great results from something which is a lot less expensive it all depends on you know your budget really um, if you want to go out and buy the best by all means do that however you can still uh, produce a decent quality radio show uh, on much less of a budget. So you'll need to route these either through a mixing desk, which provides them with uh, what is known as phantom power. Um, most of these mics have got XLR connectors, which is a standard microphone connection. You could use an audio interface just like this if you don't have a mixing desk to connect these up to a computer. This is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. And this retails around £100, probably about $180, something like that. This is, again, a really nice bit of kit. This is considered a studio quality. You can buy cheaper audio uh, interfaces if you're on a budget. Just go, go, just go onto Amazon or Google and search for XLR audio interface. Loads of stuff comes up. So thanks for watching this video. If you want to start your own radio station, we recommend our product, radio.co. We uh, specialize in making it easy for people to start radio stations using our platform, and we will help you with getting set up. We've got lots of videos and tutorials to show you how it's all done. Thanks very much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been useful and uh, you'll be able to go out and purchase a microphone that suits your requirements.